Um, so thank you very much everyone for joining us this evening for this webinar and hello to anyone who's watching after uh, on the recording. So yeah, my name is Caroline Rance. I'm the climate and energy campaigner here at Friends of the Earth Scotland. And I wanted to do this webinar this evening because it's been a really incredibly busy couple of weeks for climate news. Um, so just a couple of weeks ago, we saw Nicola Sturgeon declaring a climate emergency. Then of course we had the new report from the UKCCC, the Committee on Climate Change, saying that Scotland should reach net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2045. Uh, the government have said they will adopt that. We have the draft climate law going through Parliament and uh, we've seen already some changes to the things that the Scottish Government are doing. So for example, just last week, they scrapped a planned tax cut for the aviation industry. Um, so it's been a really busy couple of weeks and the aim of this webinar really is to try and go behind the headlines of those stories um, and update you a bit on more on the detail of those developments to understand how they link together and what needs to happen now in the context of this advice in the context of the climate emergency being declared here in Scotland. Um, and I think before we delve into the detail of that, it's really important to reflect on, um, on what public pressure has done to bring us to this point. So obviously this has all come on a huge wave since we had the IPCC special report on 1.5 in October. Since then we've seen the school strikes with thousands of kids taken to the streets across the UK. Uh, and of course, we've had Extinction Rebellion, um, blocking streets, taking action, groups popping up all across Scotland, all across the UK. There's a real growing public awareness of climate change, a real growing frustration of the fact that politicians don't seem to be going fast enough, um, and a real demand for people now um, to, to push our politicians to live up to their words on the climate emergency. So I think it's just really important to remember that. Sometimes it feels like things aren't happening, but a lot of what has happened in the last few weeks has definitely come about because of public pressure. Um, and we've just got a little bit more pushing to go. Um, so don't lose heart, we're doing. <laughs> we're moving forwards, but we've still got a bit more to go. Um, so I am gonna start off by sharing my screen with you. I've got a bit of a presentation. Thanks. Okay. So here is the agenda for this evening. So first of all, the net zero report. What does it say? What's it all about? We'll touch on the climate emergency declaration made by Nicola Sturgeon and uh, what that means and how we can use that in our campaigning. And then relate it back to the climate change bill. So of course, we've got this draft climate law going through the Scottish Parliament at the moment. We'll talk a bit about the timescales of that. Uh, and what happens next. And then at the end, we'll, we'll look at future dates and opportunities for people to get involved, to take action and push this forward. So the net zero report, long awaited. Um, so this is a report by the UK Committee on Climate Change, the CCC, and they are the independent advisors on climate change to both the Scottish government and the UK government at Westminster and the Welsh government, in fact. Um, and this report was requested by um, the UK and Scottish governments after the IPCC report in October. And the aim of this report was to look at, in the context of IPCC, what UK and Scotland contribution should be to limiting warming to 1.5. Um, so they've worked on this quite quickly. Uh, that request went in in October. Um, and of course, we saw the report just come out on the 2nd of May. So I'm sure you'll have seen some of these headlines. Uh, whoop, going too fast. Um, so yeah, headlines all across the news. Great as ever to see climate change hitting the headlines. So Climate Change UK can cut emissions to nearly zero by 2050. Uh, and in Scotland, um, we had headlines that Scotland is to set a faster target for net zero emissions. So let's look in a little bit more detail at what the report actually says. So it is a net zero report and net zero 
if anyone doesn't know what that means, uh, it means that we balance the greenhouse gas emissions that are still being released from Scotland. Uh, they're balanced out with emissions that can be taken up by, for example, peatlands, uh, trees, etc. So the report recommended a net zero target across the whole of the UK by 2050. So the entire of the UK should be net zero emissions by 2050. And then they've uh, recommended slightly different targets for Scotland and for Wales. So for Scotland, as I'm sure you'll have seen, they've recommended net zero, uh, now this is for all greenhouse gas emissions, not just carbon, so all greenhouse gas emissions to be net zero in Scotland by 2045. And in Wales, they've recommended uh, that they reach 95% by 2050. Um, and the reason that they think Scotland can go further um, is they're saying Scotland has a greater capacity to remove emissions than the UK as a whole. And we'll touch a wee bit more on this later, but this greater capacity is partly because we've got the majority of the UK's peatland and peatland is a really great carbon sink, a great carbon store and we've also got um, much greater land use, uh, sorry much greater land area compared to population uh, and much greater potential for reforestation. Um, in Wales they, they recommended only going to 95% by 2050 because they have so many sheep <laughs> apparently that's exactly what they said. So they've got a much bigger agricultural sector for their small size um, so it'd be a little bit harder for Wales to get to net zero at the same time. Um, but just in terms of that, the greater capacity to remove emissions, what we really want to concentrate on and what the, the rail solutions are here are reducing our emissions as far as possible. So absolutely every sector should be cutting emissions right back as far as possible and then any uh, any sort of sinks that we need, any removals of emissions from the atmosphere should be done through what we call natural climate solutions, so through reforestation through peatlands. We as Friends of the Air Scotland don't want to see that being done through, for example, carbon capture and storage or bioenergy carbon capture and storage. These are technologies that would allow us to continue business as usual in terms of the oil and gas industry for years to come. Um, so I'll talk a bit more about about those uh, those solutions later on, but just as the headline for Scotland, um, net zero 2045. And then they also recommended uh, targets for the years below. So for uh, Scotland, so you see net zero by 2045. Then they said by 2040, we should have reached a 90% cut in all greenhouse gas emissions and now that's compared to 1990 levels. And for 2030, they're recommending a 70% cut in emissions compared to 1990 levels. So to put you in the picture of what, what that really means, <laughs> so where we are now, uh, we're, we're currently at about halfway. Uh, we've reduced our emissions about half from 1990 already. Um, but is it good enough? Well, <laughs> On net zero 2045, as Friends of the Earth, we were calling for that net zero date to be 2040. So it's definitely uh, an increase in ambition. It's a welcome step forward. It's not quite as much as we were asking for. Um, but for us, the real focus is on the next decade and action in the next decade. And that's where we see a real shortfall in the advice here. Um, this graph has come from the report itself. Uh, so the, the blue line that's coming down at the top, that's our emission reductions already. So that's, oops, sorry. Uh, so that's how far we've already reduced our emissions in Scotland. And then the green line is what the UK Committee on Climate Change is recommending now. Um, but what you'll see at the bottom here is they say the interim targets have been calculated on a straight line trajectory to net zero. And basically what the committee have said, and they've said this very explicitly, it's in the report, that because this was a net zero report, so much of the work and the analysis was on the, the faraway targets. When can Scotland and the UK reach net zero? And 
uh, they've, they've stated very clearly that they simply didn't have the time to do the detailed analysis to 2030. So they haven't been able to look at what Scotland should do or what Scotland could do in the next 10 years. And the way that they've measured uh, or the way they've advised new targets for 2030 and 2040 was simply to, to look at what our 2020 target is, look at the 2045 net zero target and draw a straight line between them. Um, so it's important that we understand that the limitations of that. Um, now we know we've done some uh, sort of quite crude analysis, internal analysis, looking at things that the Scottish government have already said that they could do and things that the CCC have advised that would take you easily up to 77% uh, of emissions by 2030. And that's before you add on any new uh, policy action that the government hasn't yet talked about or the CCC haven't advised to them. So we know that it's that it is important to go further in the next decade. Don't forget the IPCC have told us the next decade is crucial um, and that we know that we can go further. Um, so this is just to show you uh, where we are. So this is the, the blue line here is the 2009 uh, Act. So that's the, the law that we currently have. The orange line is what the government originally proposed for this climate change bill. The green line going down at the bottom here, that's what we at Friends of the Earth Scotland are calling for. And then the blue line um, now, take the blue line with a, a bit of a caveat that I have just very crudely drawn this in. <laughs> so this is not, the rest of it is quite well plotted. This is a bit of a crude line, the blue one, but this is um, roughly uh, what the CCC are advising. So you can see that, that it is uh, a big increase uh, at the lower end here, around 2045, 2050. That's a, a good increase in ambition, but it's not doing quite as much as, as we need to. Um, and to understand the differences between the Friends of the Earth Scotland position and the UK Committee on Climate Change ambition, um, it's, it's useful to understand uh, how, how we calculate um, what we think Scotland should do and how they calculate. So, um, oh, I'll not do that yet. So, Scotland uh, is as you all know, historically been a big emitter, a big emitter of climate emissions. Um, we invented the Industrial Revolution. We've had a long history of belching out greenhouse gas emissions. We're also a relatively wealthy country and we've got a really good capacity for renewable technology. Um, we can do quite a lot more and we have a moral obligation because we've emitted so much in the past. We've got a moral obligation to act faster. Uh, than the sort of global average, if you like. So the targets that we recommend as Friends of the Earth Scotland are based on this methodology called fair shares. And that takes into account exactly those three things. Um, your historical responsibility as a country, what, uh, you know, how financially able you are to go further and what technology is available to you to go further. And for Scotland, that brings you up at being net zero by 2040 and 86% uh, emissions reductions by 2030. And it's important to say that actually, if you were doing your full fair share as a, Scot uh, as a country, you wouldn't just be cutting emissions. Uh, the Paris Agreement is also very clear that a country doing their full fair share should also be transferring finance to the global south, to countries impacted by climate change. And they should also be transferring technology support. Um, to countries in the global south. Those things are out with the remit of this bill, um, but it's, it's important that we remember that that's really what a full fair share would look like. Now the CCC, on the other hand, are, uh, they're not a purely scientific body. They don't just look at, um, at the science. Uh, they don't look at this kind of bigger picture of you know, what's the total amount of carbon emissions that, that can be burned to stay within 1.5 and what is Scotland's fair share of that? They're uh, a group made up of, yes, some scientists, but also economists, uh, people that work in energy, and, and they model from a, a bottom-up picture. So they look at the technology that is currently around, 
and they look at what they think is politically feasible um, to do in the current situation. And they, they build up a picture from the bottom that way. They're saying, okay, maybe we can reduce um, the cars on our road by this many, we can transfer to that amount of um, renewable energy, etc. So they do this, this sort of bottom-up modeling um, of what they think is, is possible. It's also, they look at what's cost effective. They look at a least cost pathway um, uh, and with quite conservative assumptions. And I'll talk a bit more about that later. Um, so what's good in the report? Well, certainly it's good that the report covers all greenhouse gases. Um, so that means that we are looking at carbon dioxide, which is obviously a big proportion, but we're also looking at things like methane, nitrous oxide. Um, so it's the, the full range of greenhouse gases, and that's really important. Um, they've been really clear that, that the report and their advice has to cover all sectors of the economy. That includes aviation and shipping. And they've said that every sector needs to reduce emissions uh, close to zero. Um, by 2045 or 2050 from the UK. So there should be no industry, no area um, that gets a free pass to keep emitting. This, the net zero target really sets out a kind of final deadline on our emissions and every part of the economy now has to step up um, and do their part. They say that the target should be met through domestic effort uh, and that means no carbon credits. So basically no, no buying your way out of the problem. We have to do this ourselves in Scotland and in the UK. Um, we can't just keep emitting, miss some targets, and then pay someone else in another country um, to cut emissions on our behalf. This needs to be done absolutely on our own efforts. And they're really clear on the fact that this now needs to be embedded and integrated across all departments of government, at all levels of government, and in all major decisions that impact emissions. So they're really starting to say, look, you have to take this out of just being an environmental problem, out of just being a, a problem for the climate minister. And it has to be thought about in every single um, decision that the government is making uh, that could have an impact on emissions. Um, and really, really clear, and we'll, again, we'll touch on this in a bit, on the need to ramp up policy effort and new actions. It's not enough for governments just to say, oh, thanks very much for that advice. Yeah, we'll set that target. Um, setting the target means you've got to bring forward new action immediately. And there was a, a, an interview with Chris Stark, the director of the Committee on Climate Change in going to rem not remember the paper, I think it was the mirror uh, at the weekend saying, you know, at the minute, Scotland and the UK are not even doing enough to meet the current targets. They absolutely have to step up and bring forward new action to cut emissions um, if we're going to meet these net zero targets. Um, and it's also worth uh, just saying that um, it mentioned just transition as a really important approach uh, to protect workers and engage those most affected. Um, and this is particularly important in Scotland. If anyone um, whoa, had it here, so if anyone's not so sure on what just transition is, um, just transition is about making sure that as we transition away from oil and gas and high carbon industries, that the workers and the communities who are currently dependent on those jobs, dependent on those industries, are protected, that money goes into reskilling, retraining, equipping those workers and communities to, to, to stay thriving um, throughout this transition. And that's a really important point for Scotland because obviously we've got a, a huge proportion of um, the UK's oil and gas. Uh, so if I skip back a little bit, so that was what's good. <laughs> now what's not so good. Um, now as I say, what's not so good is the 2030 target that they just didn't have the time uh, and the resources to put into that. Um, for anyone who's speaking to their MSPs, I think that is really helpful to understand and, and, and we are certainly at FOES trying to make sure that MSPs understand that the target of 70% by 2030 that the, um, uh, that the committee have advised, that's not 
the absolute limit of feasibility that's that's simply a number that came off a straight line <laughs> um, so that's definitely not so good and another thing for me is that this report although the headline recommendation is is welcome and it brings a welcome shift in ambition and any shift in ambition forward is is to be welcomed if you look at the detail unfortunately this report kind of allows for emissions reduction within business as usual so it doesn't challenge um it doesn't challenge the economic model uh, it doesn't really set out any radical plans that that maybe we would have liked to have seen uh, that we think are, are proportionate to the, the climate crisis that we're in. They've read the political situation, they've read the, the economic situation, and they've tried to model in emissions reductions within that current system. So, um, so it doesn't talk about, for example, an end to fossil fuels. It doesn't talk about an end to the North Sea oil and gas industry. Um, and for a report that's looking at net zero and Scotland and the UK's contribution to the Paris Agreement and IPCC, that's a, that's a real failure. That's a, a real missing area. And it's also quite conservative, and the committee have said this themselves, it's quite conservative. Um, so, for example, when it comes to dietary change, they have assumed that there will only be a 20% reduction in the consumption of beef, lamb and dairy between now and 2050. Um, and they actually replace some of that with, uh, with people switching to pork and poultry rather than entirely plant-based diets. And of course, we've seen huge strides, um, people really changing their, their diets in recent years but it doesn't do much to really tackle um, intensive industrial agriculture they do say that it's time for an end to, to kind of voluntary measures in agriculture but they're not that strong uh, when it comes to the recommendations for for a real shift away from that that big scale uh, intensive industrial food production they're also quite conservative when it comes to things like tree cover. So um, tree cover is 13% today. They think we can get to 17% by 2050. Um, so there's some real uh, conservative assumptions in there. And they would say it themselves. They have said it themselves in the report. Um, but a couple of um, kind of red flags for me or, or warning signs is when they talk about... Um, carbon capture and storage in Scotland and they talk about bioenergy carbon capture and storage in Scotland and these would be brand new uh, industries and and they're, and they're deeply unjust <laughs> industries really um, they would allow Scotland to keep keep burning oil and gas keep digging it up keep burning oil and gas um, with the assumption that this technology would be able to capture uh, the carbon emissions and that we would be able to store that carbon uh, underground off the coast of Scotland in the, um, I'm trying to say this simply, basically in, in the kind of holes underground where oil and gas was extracted from. Um, that's, you know, these are kind of false solutions. What we need to see is real radical transformation. And remember what the IPCC said, the IPCC said we need uh, rapid transformational change across every sector of the economy um, and and that has to mean an end to oil and gas and an end to fossil fuels and a switch across to 100% renewable energy and a switch across to a much fairer society. Um, so that's the what's not so good uh, and we'll go through it a bit more in the questions I don't want to um, get too much into the detail it's about 300 pages long and there's another 300 page annex um, if anyone really wants to read it. Uh, so the climate change bill um, as I think most of you on here will know we've got a climate change bill which is currently going through parliament this will be the new law that sets out what Scotland should do um, over the coming decades and the, uh, the government have already said 
that they will take what the Committee on Climate Change have recommended, that net zero target by 2050, they will take that and put it into the bill and they will take the 70% target for 2030 and put that into the bill. But um, my view, our view at FOES is that we should be taking this advice as the new minimum and building on it. Um, so the climate change bill is still has some way to go through Parliament, it's not finished yet. Um, and we still have a chance to improve it as it goes through. Now we're calling for, um, for the 2030 target to be 86%. Uh, now some of you might have seen before, I can't actually remember what it was when we um, did the webinar a couple of months ago, but initially uh, at Friends of the Earth Scotland, we were calling for 77% by 2030. Uh, and that's because the fair shares methodology that we use um, it, come, it calculates a range, so it says uh, for Scotland you would need to be in the range of 77% to 86% by 2030. And after the IPCC report um, and the, the real, um, you know, the, the urgency coming out of that report and the clarity with which it was saying we need to act so much faster in the next decade, uh, we decided that we need to really start talking about the top end of that range. So. For us, we'd like to see 86% cut by 2030, and we need to see that backed up by real concrete actions written into the bill of how we're going to cut these emissions across, for example, transport, across our homes, across food production. Um, we want to see that net zero target set at 2040, not 2045. Um, and we want to see uh, the Just Transition Commission which the government have already committed to and they've set up a, a short-term commission for two years, we need to see that commission running for the lifetime of this bill. So for as long as Scotland is reducing our emissions, we need to have a commission which is made up of people from those affected communities, from those affected industries, um, that's advising the government on how we can protect those workers and communities, do the reskilling, do the retraining, the reinvestment that's needed. So we need that set up for the lifetime of the bill. But the real top line message for us is the urgent action over the next decade. So that's a better target and it's a better action to meet the target. And again, that was just um, the just transition uh, idea. And it's something that we're working together with trade unions on. We've got a, a strategic partnership with um, Scottish trade unions working on this issue. So the climate emergency, where does the climate emergency come into all of this? Um, now this was something uh, some of you on here or watching might be involved in Extinction Rebellion. Um, to Declaring a climate emergency was really one of the um, the first asks of Extinction Rebellion, that they wanted politicians to um, to speak the truth, to, to be clear about the fact that there is a climate crisis um, facing the world. And Nicola Sturgeon uh, at the SNP party conference um, at the end of April, it was here in Edinburgh, she declared um, that the world is indeed facing a climate emergency and said that Scotland would live up to our responsibility on climate change. Um, I'll admit to being a bit cynical <laughs> whenever I first saw this, I thought, is this just going to be more fine words from politicians um, that won't be backed up by any action? Uh, but actually, we've already seen this week that it's a, it's a really useful thing to hold back up at the government and say, look, you have declared a climate emergency. You have said that you will live up to your responsibility in climate change. There are now thousands and thousands of people watching the school strikers, Extinction Rebellion, people in local groups, people watching across Scotland, um, you have to live up to your words. And this uh, last week, they were forced to do a U-turn on a manifesto commitment, which would have seen a tax cut being given to the airline industry. And that tax cut could have resulted in, or would have resulted in more flights um, coming in and out of Scotland. And the government's own figures showed that that could have resulted in 60,000 tonnes of extra uh, CO2 emissions every year. And that would have seen our climate emissions going up uh, to the same amount of putting 30,000 new cars on the road. And they managed to get that scrapped. We've also um, heard her say in Parliament that they will now be reviewing all of their policy decisions in the light of the climate emergency. Um, 
and it looks like they might even have to reconsider their support for the third runway at Heathrow. That was something that uh, was asked of the First Minister in uh, FMQs in Parliament this week. So, yeah, I'll admit I was very cynical at the beginning. I didn't know if this was just going to be another opportunity for them to say nice words without having to follow up with any real action. Um, but it's really, really useful for us as campaigners. We are starting to see um, that, that they are having to to justify their decisions through the lens of the climate emergency. Um, but a climate emergency requires immediate action. Um, one of the things that we've been saying is that, you know, immediately you have to stop doing the, the things that are making that emergency worse, and then you have to start bringing in the solutions. So it's great to see they've dropped that tax cut for the aviation industry, but we also need to see them start reviewing policies across the board. Um, and of course, we've got the climate change bill, which is really the big test. Um, will they put into this new climate law? This is a climate law that Scotland is going to have for 25 years. Will they put into this the, the targets and the action that are really will see us deliver on the climate emergency? Um, so just a bit of a recap on how a bill becomes law. It's a three-stage process. Um, this first stage now is over. We had the, the stage one vote uh, debate in April. Uh, we had a rally outside Parliament. Some of you may have been there. Um, and now we're on to stage two. The, the process was sort of on pause for a while until we had the CCC advice. Um, now we're at stage two. And the committee, the Environment, Climate Change and Land Reform Committee, which is made up of seven MSPs in Parliament, they will start proposing and voting on amendments so they can put in amendments to change the targets, they can put in amendments to include policy action. And they'll be doing that in June. So this is a really, really crucial time. All the parties, all MSPs will be thinking about this again with the, the new uh, kind of framing of the climate emergency with the new information from the CCC advice and they'll be rethinking their position on the climate change bill. So this is a really crucial time uh, that we can influence parties and MSPs before they go in to vote on those amendments. Uh, and then at stage three, the government can bring forward new amendments and the whole parliament, so, so until then it's in the committee, then the whole parliament will vote uh, on the whole bill. Now it's unlikely that we will see that that final stage until after the summer um, but stage two will happen uh, next month. So how and when can we make a difference? Keep talking to your MSPs. Um, I know that people on here have been speaking to MSPs. Keep up that dialogue, keep up that pressure and um, make them feel accountable. They are accountable to us. Um, there's been huge numbers of public actions, demos, events. These are incredibly useful in keeping climate change up the agenda. Um, people who are working in local groups, doing local events, uh, street stalls or whatever. This is all incredibly useful to just keep it up the agenda. Um, but the key, I'll come back to this in a minute, the key messages really, um, whether you're speaking to an MSP, whether you're doing a, a demo painting a banner for your action. The climate emergency cannot wait. The government have now declared a climate emergency. They now have to act on it. An emergency can't wait 25 years. The climate crisis is harming people now. It's not just future generations. It's happening right now to people across the world, predominantly people in the global south who've done the absolute least to contribute to climate change. Um, so we need to see action now. If we're gonna hit net zero, if we're gonna tackle the climate crisis, it needs to start today and we need to see action over the next two, three, four, five, ten 10 years. Um, so that means a much stronger 2030 target and it means new policy action. And crucially, those actions will really help to improve uh, life for some people in Scotland. So one of the, the big things that we're looking at is transport. Transport is responsible for the greatest share of Scotland's climate emissions. Um, 
we need to clean up transport and clean up air pollution. Air pollution is a public health crisis. Uh, and that doesn't just mean new electric vehicles. It also means uh, cleaner and better public transport that's affordable, accessible. It means making it easier for people to walk and cycle. Um, improving the energy efficiency of our homes. This is another amendment that we're going to be pursuing in the climate change bill. Huge numbers of people in Scotland live in fuel poverty, about a million homes in Scotland. Um, and energy inefficient homes are just leaking energy. People are paying huge amounts of money for their fuel bills. Uh, you know, they're turning on the gas boiler, they're turning on the oil tank, and that heat is, is just leaking out through the buildings, and that's contributing a, a, another great, huge proportion to Scotland's climate emissions. Down south, uh, they've, uh, the Westminster government have said that they will have no new homes on the gas grid after 2025, um, and we need to see the same up here. So improving the energy efficiency uh, of current homes is really important. Um, making sure that we don't connect any new homes to the gas grid or to oil tanks if you're in a rural area and really start investing in renewable heating, whether that's district heating schemes or whether that's heat pumps. Um, the government really needs to step up in that area. Um, and sustainable agriculture. Agriculture is the other big area of emissions in Scotland. Um, improving our food production system um, will be really beneficial, not just uh, for, some of it will be beneficial for farmers, some of it will, will be uh, cheaper for farmers, um, but it will also improve uh, wildlife and water pollution. Um, so some of these actions are, are really key and one of the things that we're talking about is when we look at these tangible actions like cleaning up transport, air pollution, improving our homes, who are the other groups that we can work with? Who are the other people um, that care about these issues? Because I think sometimes when we talk about the, the numbers, it's quite hard to grasp. Um, it's, not, it's not immediately easy to understand what net zero means for life in Scotland. What does a 2030 target really, you know, 86% compared to 70%, it's hard to understand what that means. Um, so really talking about some of these tangible actions that need to happen, but will also um, just improve life for many people in Scotland. Um, I'm just going to skip back to this one. Key MSPs, these seven MSPs here are the MSPs who sit on the Parliament's Environment, Climate Change and Land Reform Committee. These are the MSPs who will be voting on the initial set of amendments next month. Uh, so if you have any of these as your MSP, it's definitely worth getting in touch with them. But don't worry uh, if your MSP is not on here, and that's very likely because there's 120 odd other MSPs. Um, you can still talk to your other MSPs because they will have to, they can speak to their party colleagues who are on this committee. Um, and they can be speaking to their, uh, their party leader and the, the group of people within their party who make these decisions. Um, it's still really, really valuable at this time to do that. Uh, and just, oh, I had another one and I've lost it. I had a timing one and I've taken it away. Sorry, I'm going to have to just um, read it to you. <laughs> so... Uh, so in terms of timing, what's happening next, tomorrow, the, the CCC, the Committee on Climate Change, the people who wrote this net zero report, they're actually in Parliament tomorrow to give evidence to the Environment, Climate Change and Land Reform Committee. That's happening from 9.30. If you're in Edinburgh, you can get a ticket and come along. If you're anywhere else, you can watch it on Parliament TV uh, and you can watch it back as well. And we should see the committee members tomorrow really start to ask quite critical questions of the CCC, um, understanding how they came to some of the decisions that they came to in the report. Why did they leave some things out? Why have they put other things in? Um, so that's happening tomorrow. Next Tuesday, uh, the cabinet secretary, the minister for climate change, Rosanna Cunningham, she will be in the parliament having to give her evidence on the climate change bill and what the government intend to do. Then there'll be another session from external stakeholders. 
and the meetings on amendments, proposing and voting on the amendments, they will happen uh, towards the middle and end of June. So that's a really crucial time uh, when those amendments are on the middle and end of June. And then stage three is the big final vote, um, which will happen sometime after summer. The date for that is to be decided, um, but probably September or October. Um, so if you're thinking of a critical moment, if you're speaking to MSPs, then definitely between uh, now and the amendments is really important. If you're thinking of, um, of, of key actions uh, and demos, then around that amendment stage um, is a really important time to intervene um, and make sure that we keep the pressure on them to, to live up to this climate emergency declaration, to live up to what the climate crisis demands that they do. Um, so those are our links for more information if you want to find out more. And I just want to finish off with, um, with a quote here from uh, one of the chairs of the IPCC um, after they delivered their special report on 1.5 in October. Every bit of warming matters, every year matters, and every choice matters. And as we make decisions now in Scotland that are gonna affect the next 25 years and what we can do, we really have to remember uh, to remind our politicians that every single choice, every decision they make in the parliament, every, every policy they choose to, to take forward and every one that they don't, that all matters. Every year that we delay action, that matters. And every single bit of warming, really makes a difference to people who are living in the global south, people who are living on the front lines. And we have got a real obligation in Scotland to live up to our, um, to our responsibility um, to do more on climate change. So I'm going to uh, leave off the recording there. Thanks again to anyone who was watching this um, uh, later. For more information, you can follow up on the website uh, or get in touch if you've got any questions.